Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to this tutorial on how to write a C++ program for the Gauss serial method that is used to find out the roots of simultaneous linear equations. Now, Gauss serial method is an iterative method and it is a numerical method and in this method what we basically do is um, let's say I have a system of linear equations such as this one. So there are three equations and we have three variables. The variables being x0, x1 and x2. So what we do first of all is we you know write down the equation of each of the variable or each of the unknown. So x0, x1 and x2 are unknowns, right? So first of all we write up the equation of x0 from the first equation. So we find out the value of x0 from the first equation by taking all these, you know, elements to the RHS and then dividing the whole thing by 6. Then similarly we find out the equation or the value of x1 from the second equation by taking everything other than x0, x1 to the RHS and then dividing the whole thing by 2. That is a coefficient of that unknown. And then finally, we find out the value of x2 by taking all the other things on the LHS to the RHS and then dividing the whole thing by the coefficient of x2, that is 2. So now once we have the you know three equations for x0, x1 and x2, what we do in this method is we take an initial guess for all the three unknowns. Now, in case you don't have any idea, it is better to just use 0, 0 and 0 for all the three unknowns slash variables so um, so what you do is you calculate the value of x not using the value of x1 and x2 to be 0 so you substitute 0 and 0 here and get a new value of x not then you calculate x1 by using the new value of x not that you calculated and you will still use the initial guess that is 0 for x2 now you will get a new value of x1 and then finally you calculate x2 by using the new value of x1 and the new value of x0 so you substitute that and get the value of x2 and then in the second iteration you repeat the process that is uh, you in to calculate x0 what you will do is you will use the newer values of x1 and x2 then you will keep on repeating the process until the successive uh, solutions for the variables are you know sufficiently close that is the error between the successive uh, uh, values is not very uh, much so that's how you perform a, a gauss the iterative method to find out the solution of a linear system of equations now to create a c++ program what we will do what we will be doing is we will be you know um, we will have a system of linear equations such as this one then what we will do is we will take all the you know coefficients of the you know of the variables or the unknowns and we will uh, use uh, and we will insert them in a matrix horizontally so we insert 6 minus 2 1 then 1 from the second row 2 from the second row and minus 5 in the second row and similarly we will make create a matrix from the coefficients and then we will also you know use the RHS in the uh, in the matrix and then we will call the matrix uh, an augmented matrix if you still don't understand what an augmented matrix is it is basically uh, you know uh, uh, how you when you join two matrices it, uh, then it is known as an augmented matrix matrix and we will be making use of this augmented matrix that will contain the coefficients and then the you know RHS of the equation also so the first row of the augmented matrix should contain the coefficients as well as the RHS of the first equation second row will contain the coefficients in the, of the second equation as well as the RHS of the second equation so we will have an augmented matrix and then what we will do is we will make the matrix diagonally dominant now what i mean by diagonally dominant is that the elements on the diagonal of the matrix should be the largest in that particular column for example um, when we created the augmented matrix what we saw was that the element in the you know at, at the diagonal is 6 to 2 right so this is the diagonal of the matrix 
Now the element in the second row here uh, at this diagonal position is not the largest in this particular column. So what we do is we exchange these two rows so that 7 comes here and thus uh, the diagonal element is the largest in that particular column. So when we do that, you know, when we perform that um, interchange of rows, then we will have 7 here and minus 5 here. So now our row is diagonally dominant. Now you might be thinking that minus 5 is smaller than 2 and 1. So how is it diagonally dominant? So basically what I mean is that the elements in the diagonal positions, their absolute value, that is their magnitude should be the largest in that particular column. It doesn't matter if the number is in negative, but its magnitude would be, you know, plus 5. Therefore, it is largest in this particular column. So this is known as diagonally dominant. So, and one more thing to keep in mind is that the gauss seidel method only works if the matrix is diagonally dominant. Well, it could uh, work a few times when the matrix may not be diagonally dominant, but uh, to create a program that works under no conditions, it is better that we, you know, create a code that, you know, uh, makes uh, ma the augmented matrix diagonally dominant whether or not the user has, has entered a matrix that is that way or not. So now I guess I have conveyed, you know, what we will be doing, uh, what the gauss seidel method is and what we will be doing in our program. So let's start with a, you know, explanation of the code. Now before I jump to the program, I will go through the algorithm first because that will give you a clear hand you know idea of what to what we will be doing in our program and also if you might be you know looking to create a program in some other language then also the algorithm will be of great help and similarly i also have a flow chart created um, it is basically the algorithm written in a flow chart way so you can go through whatever you prefer I will be attaching the files to the algorithm flowcharts and whatever I use in this video, I will be attaching the files to them in the description of this video. So you can check them out. And then finally, we will be going through the program. Now, as you could tell by now, this video is going to be pretty long. So I recommend that you, you know, maybe pause the video and sometimes if you feel uh, that it is a lot to take in, you can pause the video and maybe watch it later on and continue it from there or maybe if you just want to go through the program then you can skip the video and jump right to the point where I start the explanation of the code. Alright, so coming to the algorithm. Now the first step here is to prompt the user to enter the number of equations and basically um, what I mean here is basically I'm asking the user that how many unknowns are here because to solve like uh, an equation, a set of equations with six unknowns, what we need is we need a minimum of six equations. We could solve the you know, system of unknowns with a larger number of equations, but that's not how the Gauss-Seidel method works. Um, in Gauss-Seidel method, we will require the number of equations to be equal to the number of unknowns. So basically, this step is to get the number of unknowns, and that implies the number of equations. So that would be stored in a variable called n. Then we prompt the user, uh, I'm sorry, we don't prompt the user, but what we do is we create a matrix of the size n cross n plus 1. So the matrix should be, you know, of n containing n rows and n plus 1 columns. And in C++ we can do that by creating a two-dimensional array of size n cross n plus 1. Then you know why we are creating this matrix is to store the augmented matrix. Now as I told you earlier or I showed you earlier, um, as you can see that the augmented matrix contains the same number of rows as the number of unknowns, however it contains one extra column to store the RHS of the equation. Therefore the number of columns should be n plus 1. So we will create this augmented matrix, then we will you know create an array x the array will be called x and it will be of size n which will store the solutions to these unknowns. So basically if there are three unknowns as there are in this case, so our array x would be of size 3 and it will be storing the values of x0, x1 and x2. Alright, then um, 
we will prompt the user to enter the elements of the augmented matrix. So if the user has a set of linear equations like this one, so they will be prompted to enter it in this form. Like they will need to enter the coefficient of the first row in the first row as well as the, you know, the fourth element that will be the origin. So they will have to enter the elements like 6, minus 2, 1, 11 and then they will jump on to the second row. So we will prompt the user to enter the elements of the augmented matrix. Then we will prompt the user to enter the initial guesses for x0, x1 and x2. So let's say um, the user enters 0, 0, 0 for the three unknowns then the x array that we created earlier would be initialized with zero in all of the you know positions then finally we prompt the user in the sixth step to enter the tolerance limit and we store that in a variable called eps which stands for epsilon so the tolerance limit is something like um, let's say that after two iterations the value of x naught differs only by you know 0 0.01 and uh, maybe the tolerance limit that is desired by the user is not very much and he says that you can give me the answer if it is correct at least up to one decimal place and if the, you know after two iterations the value of x naught is differing only by 0 0.01 then it, then it is good for the user so you you will need that you know tolerance limit so that you can terminate your a loop uh, whenever you meet the tolerance limit or the error limit specified by the user so that you do not go on forever or you do not you know keep on repeating the steps even if the user doesn't desire that much of an accuracy so that's why the tolerance limit is there and then finally uh, we come to the program so all right, so as I told you earlier, um, the augmented matrix that we have needs to be diagonally dominant. So what we will be doing is we'll be you know, using this code to make that happen. And this procedure is also known as privatization or pi partial privatization, I think. So that's why you see this word right here. And what we do here is we start a loop that is where i goes from 0 to n minus 1 and then we create another loop where k goes from i plus 1 to n minus 1. Then we, you know, we compare the uh, one of the element of the matrix A which is the augmented matrix by the way. I forgot to mention that earlier but the augmented matrix is represented by A throughout the code. So what we do is we compare the element in the ith row and the ith element that is the diagonal element of the augmented matrix A. We compare that to the elements in the same column that is i but in different rows um, which are denoted by k and since k goes from i plus 1 to n minus 1 so it will compare you know uh, the diagonal element with all the elements lying below it in the same column so it will compare all the di diagonal elements with the elements lying below it in the same column and I can just show you a picture to make that clear. So basically what this code will do is um, it will compare 6 with 1 and minus 2 and since it will see that it is the large, uh, 6 is the largest so it will not perform this step, these two steps right here. So it will just uh, keep on repeating the loop until this loop gets over and then it will go back to the previous loop at that. Okay, so that's how you perform privatization, right? So that's how you will be making your augmented matrix diagonally dominant. And then going to the next part of the program. Now this is the part where we will be performing the Gauss-Seidel like trading method and, and we will be finding the solution to the unknowns. So what we do here is we start a loop where i goes from 0 to n minus 1 and then we make um, y. We create another variable y and we make it equal to xi. Now if you remember I told you that we will be storing the initial guesses in x so um, we will make y equal to x0 in the first iteration since in the first iteration x is equal to you know um, in the first iteration i is equal to 0 so what we do is we make y equal to x0 and since x0 is the you know um, first unknown and we have stored the initial guess in the array x. So we make y equal to that initial guess then we make 
x0 in the second step what we do is we make x i equal to a i n and for the first iteration that means we are making x0 equal to 11. Now you can see that I used n for the column and i for the row. So we are accessing the last column of the first row that is the zeroth row um, because uh, whenever you you know I told you earlier that um, to perform the boss iterative method what we, you need to do is you need to make find out the value of x naught and the only way to do that is you know to uh, take all these elements on the RHS so that's what is being done here in the code we are making um, you know x naught equal to the RHS and then we will start another loop where j will go from 0 to n minus 1 and then we will see whether j is equal to i or not if it is equal to i then we will skip this uh, you know particular iteration and for j equals to 0 it is actually equal to i as you can see so we will skip the first iteration but then j will be incremented and j will become 1 so in the second iteration what we will do is we will make xi equal to xi minus aij times xj so basically for i equals to 0 in the first iteration it means x0 is equal to x0 minus a01 times x1 so basically we made RHS that was 11 uh, minus um, the coefficient of x1 so we made x0 equal to the RHS minus coefficient into x1 and that's how you perform you know that's how you calculate the value of x0 then another time when the you know the value of j is incremented until it reaches n minus 1 this time j will become 2 and we will find out the value of x naught by getting uh, the by subtracting the the you know coefficient times x2 from the previous value of x naught and then finally we will have calculated x naught and then in the end after this loop is over what we will do is we will divide that uh, xi by its own coefficient so we will divide x naught by a00 that is 6 for the first iteration so we will divide x naught by 6 as you can pretty much understand um, we you know basically what we did was we made x naught equal to 11 then we made x naught equal to 11 plus 2x1 and then finally in the third step we made it x naught equal to 11 plus 2x1 minus x2 and then when the loop for j was over we divided x naught by its own coefficient which was 6 you can see that the coefficient of x naught was 6 so we divided it by that alright so that is how you will be calculating the value of each and every coefficient I'm um, sorry each and every unknown so you will calculate the value of each and every unknown by using this loop and then we have uh, you know uh, this if condition to check whether the newer value of the unknown is uh, how much greater you know this if condition uh, checks whether uh, checks by how much you know the newer value of this unknown is greater than the previous value and if it is you know less than or equal to the desired accuracy or the desired tolerance limit then we will increment a variable called flag you can see that we created a variable flag and set it to zero and then if we meet the desired accuracy then we will set it we will increment that flag and then finally we will you know uh, come out of the loop of i and we will uh, repeat the loop where i will be incremented by one this time and this time we will deal with x1 the second unknown and then this procedure will keep on repeating until we have calculated the uh, you know um, values for all the unknowns that is x0 x1 x2 and x3 and whenever you know the newer value of an unknown is not uh, great not greater by the previous value by the um, any more than the tolerance limit then we will increment the flag so whenever we reach our you know tolerance limit for any particular unknown we will increment the flag and we will keep on doing that until you know the flag reaches the number of uh, flag is less than the number of equations 
I've, um, I mistakenly have written three here because we had three equations in this particular example, but you might want to write n over here and not three because usually what you will have is you will have n equations. You want to know whether the user is going to enter three equations or not. So we'll keep on repeating the procedure to calculate the unknowns until we have incremented the flag the same number of times as there are, you know, the unknowns. So until the flag has incremented or has become equal or less than to the number of unknowns in the equation, we will keep on repeating the process. And then finally, once our flag is equal to the number of equations, then we will print out the X array which stores the solutions of the unknowns. Now, we have the flowchart here and then we also have the program, but this video is getting really long, so I guess I should end it now and continue the explanation of the program on to the next video. So I guess thanks for watching this one and make sure that you watch the next video for a complete explanation of the code. This is the code that I will be explaining and I will also be showing the you know, the output of the code by running it. So make sure that you watch that. And I guess I will just end the video now. So that's it. Thanks for watching.